Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be picking up where I left off in the last video I made featuring these scale 3D RC bodies. If you haven't yet seen the first video that I did, I highly recommend checking out that video before watching this one. In that last video I made, I talked a little about Scale 3D RC, as well as took a quick look at their awesome selection of 3D printable RC crawler bodies available for you to purchase and print. I then got both of the bodies that I'll be building printed, assembled, and sanded. In this video, I'll be completing the post-print finishing work on both of these bodies. I started with the PN89 SUV. After the sanding that I did previously, this body was already starting to look pretty decent. I still wanted to do some more post-print finishing work on it though to help improve the appearance even more and make the 3D print lines less visible. Like I did previously, I used some coarse sandpaper to sand around the entire body, focusing on some sections that were still rough and had some print lines showing. On the previous video, I received a lot of comments recommending that I get a sanding sponge to do this. I will definitely be getting some sanding sponges to use on future projects. At the time of filming this, I only had sandpaper available. The sanding is one of my least favorite parts of a build like this, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that opinion, but in general, the more time spent sanding and filling until the surface is smooth, and the 3D print lines have been eliminated, the better the truck will look. I recently got this set of pick tools from an Ace Hardware clearance bin. They're a lot like the dental picks that are nice for deepening panel lines on smaller scale model car bodies. I thought with these being a little larger, they might come in handy for bigger 10th scale bodies such as this one. I used one of these picks to deepen all the panel gaps. To make this body look more like a pathfinder, I cut a third opening on the hood. I roughly marked where I would need to make the cuts, and then I used a hot knife to remove this section. I sanded around this opening until the edges were smooth and it was the same size as the other two openings. Although all the sanding and heavy coats of primer has made the surface on the majority of the body nice and smooth, the exceptions are the hood and the rear of the body, due to how the parts were oriented while being printed. As you can see, the 3D print lines are still very visible. Orienting the hood differently for printing would have reduced this, however, it would have also made printing it a little more difficult. I decided to use some filler to help smooth the transition between the 3D printed layers. Since I have a ton of Milliput epoxy putty on hand, I decided to try using it. The milliput worked okay, I used some water to thin it, and I really tried to work it into the sections between the layers, but it was difficult to do this. This putty is getting old, which may be why it was kind of a pain to work with, but at least I'm not letting it go to waste. I don't know if I'd recommend milliput for doing this to anyone following along. Like I said, it's okay, but using a hobby filler or something like Bondo would probably work much better. I tried to not make it too thick to minimize the sanding that would be required. I also made sure to carve out the panel lines in the rear while the putty was still soft. I let the putty dry overnight and then sanded these sections smooth. Although I should have applied it a little thicker, it does still help to reduce the layering in these sections. Mm -hmm. 
To help add a little more detail to this body, I wanted to add door handles. Using a reference image as a guide, I simply cut and sanded some small pieces of styrene to be the handles for both the doors and the rear tailgate. By this point, the lines around the fuel fill door were starting to get faint and needed to be deepened. To complete the post print finishing work on this body, I used a little bit of hobby filler in a few spots that still needed it. I then waited for it to dry and sanded these sections flush. In addition to the post print finishing work I did on the body, I also printed out the front bumper, grille, lights, and side view mirrors. This was my first opportunity to try out the Prima Clear PETG filament. Along with modifying the hood, I also wanted to make a few minor modifications to the grille to make it look a little more like a Pathfinder. I cut out a few sections and will later glue some contour wire mesh to the back. I also make sure that all the headlight parts will fit. I wanted to give myself the option of installing LED lights. To do this, I used a reamer to make holes in each light bucket and made them just large enough for an LED to fit. The side view mirrors turned out great and only needed a little bit of sanding. Using a thin styrene sheet, I cut two mirror pieces that can be painted and glued separately. With all the parts looking good, I applied some paint. For the H2500 body, I used the exact same process I did to smooth the PN89. 
The print quality of this body was not quite as good as the other one, so this body ended up being a little more work. But by the end, I was really pleased with the result. As I've mentioned previously, I'm not going for a brand new shiny look with either of these bodies, so I'm not going to worry about trying to remove every little imperfection. There were some sections I did want to improve, however, just like with the previous body, so I once again used some Milli Putt to fill these sections. I applied it thicker this time, which did a little better job of filling the places that needed it, but it did take longer to sand. The result was once again a nice improvement. Unfortunately, the shallower panel lines on this body have disappeared in some spots. I marked where I wanted to remake the panel lines, and then used a hot knife to cut them into the plastic. I then cleaned up the lines with sandpaper, side cutters, and a pick. Although this didn't produce the cleanest lines, I was still satisfied with the result. Although it did take some time to get these bodies smooth and ready for paint, I'm really pleased with how they turned out, and I'm looking forward to getting them built and mounted onto a chassis. The techniques used in this video and in the previous one worked well for me, though keep in mind there are a ton of different post-print finishing techniques that you can try to achieve similar results, so I highly recommend experimenting with different tools and processes. Before concluding this video, I want to announce the winner of the Scale 3D RC giveaway, who is on screen right now. Congratulations to the winner! In the description of this video, you'll find an email address and a few simple instructions. Please refer to that to claim your prize. If I don't receive any response in one week from today, I will randomly select another entry and announce the winner in the community tab here on YouTube. So if you're interested in being notified, you can turn on notifications by clicking the bell next to the subscribe button. I also may be doing some more giveaways and some upcoming videos featuring these builds, so be sure to be on the lookout for those as well. But that is all for today's video, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.